That comes down to what you're saying as a role model. The best way of parenting is being a good role model. And therefore the kid will at least have a role model to follow. You see a lot of parents these days complaining about how their kids are influenced by online personalities, influencers or whatever it is. But as a parent, you need to take that position of the ultimate influencer in your kid's life. If my kid's going to be influenced by everybody else, so be it. But I need to be able to trump that influence. And I need to have that position in my kid's life. Protecting kid also means you're protecting the kid from the environment. Today's to answer that question, well, the way a lot of parents look at it today is that my job as a parent is to love my child unconditionally. That comes down to what you're saying as a role model. So mm. if the, <coughs> best, the best way of parenting is being a good role model. Yeah. Okay? Uh, and therefore the kid will at least have a role model to follow. So if you can't do that, then you already lost the, the, the fight, most of the fight anyway, because you're not a great role model. Mm. So it's like being hypocritical if you're saying to the kid do something, but you're doing something else. It's like, you know, a parent saying to the kid, and I've seen this many times during my time, where you should never smoke, but the parent's got to smoke. Exactly. Mm. You never smoke, all right? Don't do what I did, all right? Mm. Or drinking alcohol and you know, gambling and you know, all this sort of stuff. No, don't do this. Uh, learn from your dad. This is not good to do, but they're doing it themselves. Yeah. Okay. That's not the way you, you, uh, of being a good role model. Yeah. Okay. Look, and another way of framing all this is that you see a lot of parents these days complaining about how their kids are influenced by online personalities, influencers or whatever it is. But as a parent, you need to take that position of the ultimate influencer in your kid's life. Because that's what you are to him. Yeah. You are yeah. the number one influence in his life. And anybody who has any relationship with this guy knows that he is uh, sort of a chip off the old block, so to speak. Yeah. And that's how it works. Even does, it like has pros and cons. Pros and cons, right? But everywhere, everything has pros and cons. So at the end of the day, as a parent, you're like, okay, well, how can I, you know, if my kid's going to be influenced by everybody else, so be it. But I need to be able to trump that influence. And I need to have that position in my kid's, in my kid's life. Well, it's interesting you said that because when they were young, all right, they probably won't be aware of this, but when they were young, I used to always say that, you know what, it, I've got to be spending all my time with the kids. Otherwise, they're going to find other friends to spend True. time with and they're going to be influenced by those friends. Correct. So I say that, you know what, if the kids want to go play and do this, this I'll go with them. I'll be their friend on those parks and kick, you know, playing football and playing cricket together and uh, doing all the activities together. That way, they don't need a friend because they've got their dad. Because mm. right? I always said to myself, if I don't do it, someone else is going to do it. Yeah. All right? They're going to have bad influence from the other friends. So I'd rather be there... But that takes a lot of effort. Again, we're going back to the effort. Yeah. Speaking of friends, it's a good point that you brought up. Should a parent influence who a kid should be friends with? Yes. No doubt. And you know I've done that yeah. too. So you you absolutely. done that I've done that many life. times. Man, think about it. It's like, it's like having a bucket with a hole in it, man. You, you're pumping your kid with all these positivity, all these the right morals, right? And they've got a bad friend. And all of a sudden, everything's just leaking out. It's pointless. Completely pointless. And especially at a young age, you can really control it. Like, I control it. Mm. I could, I, absolutely, 100%. The kids that come over, you have these little play dates or whatever it is. I absolutely control where, where the, who the kid is, what family they come from. 100%. I'm not going to let my good hard work go to waste just because some stupid kid's coming with Even the now, I, I implement that to myself. Like, I'm very picky who I'm friends with. Because you are what your friends are. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And when I meet someone new and, and I see their circle... I'm like, this person has shit friends. 100% this is a horrible person. Yep. And they end up being a horrible person. Like, you attract the yeah. shit. You are your friends. Yeah. Yeah. yeah pretty much. Yeah. Again, that, again, woke parents won't allow that. Or won't agree to that. Yeah. They're like, my kid should be friends with whoever they want. And uh, uh, uh. I don't think so. Really? Yeah, you'll be surprised. My parents going to say that. You come They're across a, a girl, a lady with the blue hair, right? <laughs> she she, will, <laughs> she blue will fight you, man. <laughs> She'll fight you. What? Yeah. Oh, mate. It, it, it's this generation of you be you. That's it. Okay? We're going to love you for who you are, how you are, what you are. Doesn't matter. And that's how but it is. But then what's the point of having a parent if the parent's not there to protect the kid? It's a cop-out. It's the easiest way to make it socially but isn't, accessible. Isn't that the job of the parent to protect the kid? The protecting the kid also means you're protecting the kid from the environment. Today's... To answer that question... The way, the way a lot of parents look at it today is that my job as a parent is to love my child unconditionally. Irrespective of are, what are you, they are do. Are you serious or how what? They, Yeah. That's how it is. Unconditional love. Parents out there pride themselves on that. You know, parents out there giving parenting advice and whatnot. It's like, okay, well, They're giving you, parenting advice. Yeah, and when they ask, okay, how do you parent your child? Their answer is in one, sen in one statement, I love my child unconditionally. That is it. And what that means is my kid can do whatever the hell they want. They have my blessing. They have my sign off. Doesn't matter. Harm other people, steal, do whatever you like. Doesn't matter. Because I will love you unconditionally. 
it's the biggest cop out in history. But what I'm trying to understand why you saying that is, okay, then what's the role of a parent then if that's the case? If um, the kid's going to learn their own life. You're a walking bank. Exactly. ATM facility. That's it. ATM. That's all it is. You, there's, you're not there to educate, train, you, protect, you, all that stuff. You provide. That's the all. law is, is is changing though, as, as, as well. Like the Australian law is making a parent redundant. Mm. You speak up, you do anything, you, you're finished. But the, the child hasn't, hasn't learned anything in life yet. Someone's got to teach it. Yeah. And that's what schools are for, apparently. Schools don't teach life. Mm. Apparently they do. That's what a parent's there for. That's what a parent's there for. Yeah. To mentor the kid and train and develop that kid. Yeah. And protect. It's, 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 I mean, and when I say protect, I'm re, I mean properly protect. There's so much things that you've got to protect your child from now. I feel like this probably applies more for the Western countries. Being, obviously, being in Australia, like, it's, it's almost becoming impossible for a Muslim to have a child in this country because of you put them in the education system they are being fed with all sorts of things right there's a you know living in airport west there's a um, there's a child library in nidri child library something like never that, heard of child library right? before and it was it was on facebook this popped up and that that library got a lot of slack because a drag queen came oh, I've heard about this. to yeah. read books for kids a drag queen like three-year-old kids three four-year-olds right and parents are like, what the hell is a drag queen doing t reading k books to my kids? Like, what the hell is going on, right? And then the library's response was, your kid needs to see these be things. Be exposed to all this. Be exposed so they yeah. decide what they want to be, mm. right? So a lot of those parents actually got in trouble, right? And actually, cops actually went up to them, started questioning them, saying, are you, like, mentally abusing your child? Or should we take your kid away? Like, what is wrong with you? Get your shit together, Right? So, like, it's becoming, well, it's not just social media, it's not just friends, it's not this, it's not that. Like, it's, the problem is ever growing. It's growing. Mm. Just, just so I'm clear, because maybe a I'm. A drag queen. Yeah, I was going to ask, picture, what's a drag queen again? Picture Huck and Ozzy on in, in, in makeup and, and lovely blonde wig. In a okay. Transvestite. <laughs> so that's what a drag, drag queen is. Yeah. yeah. Like a man that dresses up like a woman. Yeah. Is that what it is? Okay. Just had to clarify that. So, just rocking up there and just reading this. And they're conditioning kids like this is normal, right? And then as a parent, how do you protect your child from that? How do you protect your child from that? Because if you say anything, you're going to be done for, you know, bullying your child. You don't have to say anything. You just you just act. You don't send your kid. That's it. But That's what the role of parents is. They're implementing this across every, every school, every public school. And a lot of Muslims, right, a lot of parents can't afford public, uh, private schools. So you're sending your kids into these... I don't even know how to describe let me, it. Let me just yeah. understand, because uh, uh, maybe I'm out of touch with what's going on in the world. Maybe I'm a little bit out of touch. Let me just clarify. Um, are you saying that parents don't own the kids anymore? Is that what you're saying? Because usually parents dictate on what the kids get exposed to. Okay? That's, what, that's my understanding mm. of me be growing up as me being parent of my kids when they were small. I dictate on what the kids are going to be taught and what environment they're going to be in. It's, they're my kids. And I will say what, regarding my kids, I am the one that makes the calls. So you're saying that's taken away from the parents or yes. no? I'll yeah. give you another example. Like this is how taken away it is. So my barber that I always go to, right? We have deep chats all the time. And he came to me, he's like, bro, I had a mum bring their child to get a haircut, right? And the mum was complaining. I'm like, about what? And she's like, one of my younger childs is in prep, right? And the first day at prep, the teachers asked, what do you identify as? To a child. Wow. They all are like five prep? Five? five? No five, way. Five. And the kids were so confused. First day, asking, what do you identify as? And the first, that was the first topic. And then so they started, they sat all the kids down and then they started teaching these identities, these three trillion identities that you could become a microwave, this microphone, you could become a pot plant, you could become that ball, you could become a cloud. So they're teaching all this shit. To these kids. To preppies, man. Right? Wow. And then the mum, and then the kid came. When the kid came to home and went to the mum, he's like, oh, my kid identifies this, is this, what does this mean? Right? And then the mum's like, are you okay? <laughs> right? So the next day she went there. It's like, what are you guys teaching the kids? Again, same issue. Cops, this, that. They got involved saying, is the kid okay? Are you, you know, brainwashing uh, are you, the child? Are you joking? I, you I, I swear to God. Right? I swear to God. 
right? So I'm going to ask this question to Maza because if I ask you, we're going to get cancelled, right? <laughs> Maza, as, oh, as a Muslim, uh, and this is a genuine question okay. for Muslims, right? As a Muslim, how do we protect you being a mufti? Maza's a mufti. He loves being called a mufti. So Maza's well, a mufti. I don't love being called it. I just as a problem. parent, how do we protect our children from being... How do I how do I describe this without getting I'm in trouble? Be, I'm not how, getting involved. How do we how do we <laughs> teach our children not to um, be brainwashed? That's not the right word. That's not the right word. Um, how do you uh, teach your children to be Muslim? <laughs> 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 uh, well, so you get the question. Yeah, yeah. I get, look, I answer the question. Um, it, it's something that I think I, as a parent, and I think. Every parent these days struggles with, but the way I look at it personally, and again, everyone's everyone has their own view on this. Number one, you need to um, you you have to control what you can control, right? You can control the environment that you create for your kids at home. A lot of parents, Muslim parents, don't create a good religious Islamic environment at home. You you, you tell me, as as a bloke who's brought up three Muslim kids at home, that environment makes a huge difference. It does. If your if your kids are seeing prayer, fasting, Quran, this and that, it will impact their lives. Whether directly, indirectly, it will have an impact. And that will, in a big way, preserve and protect your kids from a whole raft of negative influences externally. Number two, pay very, very close attention to the environments that you put your kids into. Because ultimately, you control where your kids go. If your kids are going to a school where these things are being taught or whatever it is, there's no you know, legal obligation on you to send your kids to that environment. If your kids are going to a library where there's a, a drag queen reading to them, again, no one's put a gun, a gun to your head to say you have to send your kids over there. Pull them out, send them somewhere else. There are still enough environments. Do it at home. Have your little reading club, book club, whatever it is at home. With Work with other families. So many families these days and that come in to get together to create their own little cooperatives. Like a little co-op to like, you know what, we are, and it's not just Muslims. It's we are traditional Christians. We are traditional this, traditional that, whatever it is. Conservative families who are coming together and saying, look, you know what, we're going to create a protected bubble around us to say, we're going to live by normal traditional values. Okay, We're not going to identify as pot plants and as books and as whatever it is. We're going to identify as human beings and we're going to live by these moral codes and ethics and whatever. And that's it. And people once more time used to call it Amish or whatever it is. But you know what? That's the way that you're going to have to protect your kids these days. Because you have to create that little force field around them. Otherwise, society will smash them pillar to post and you won't know what weird vegetable your child will turn out at, at when they're 20 years old. It's, it's very, very scary. But there's really not much else you can do. And, and be guided by your faith, by your religion, by your values. That's really about it. That, that's that's the way we're trying to do it. 